Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Sizzle here. with a video here today. Bring you guys a Photoshop slash Cinema 4D tutorial here today. Bring you guys a cool little 3D, like it's gonna be something with a white background in the title, hopefully. Anyway, it's just my little cool rendition of an older tour that I actually did like in 2013. I was like just curious to see what I can like revamp 3D wise. I found this little spline video and I was like, bro, this would work perfectly cool. Like this would work. So I just did it. And I think it came out really, really freaking cool. I think I just, I love the contrast just very simply two separate colors and it just looks really really cool and it's very very easy as well so hopefully you guys do enjoy the video here today and uh yeah so i'm uh, just gonna let you guys just go don't forget 200 likes on the video equals a secret down below so don't forget that homies and i told you guys i'll bring you back those banner tutorials but you know i really wanted to get those like videos that i had on my sticky notes that i just never post out of the way and just like let the month go with just like little fun little things so i do appreciate all of you guys who of course even supported those videos hey, they got like 140 likes minimum so let's go ahead and just make sure we beat that let's get that 200 likes again um so yeah i'll see you guys in the video and uh, hopefully you guys do enjoy and uh yeah that's it let's just let's just get this thing going all right, guys, it's going to start off the Cinema 4D version of this little or Cinema 4D part of the video first, right? So I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys one thing or two things really quickly. If you guys don't have a Lightroom, please, for the love of God, just download mine. I've downloaded this or, excuse me, like, gave it out, like, many, many times before. But if you guys don't have an actual Lightroom to use for yourselves, I would quickly advise you guys to go ahead and download mine, right? So you guys at least have something that kind of gives you better quality when it comes to your renders. Um, Second thing is, right, I would advise you guys to also change your preview to exactly the same as that dimension that you're going to be using inside Photoshop. So for me personally, I'm going to be using a Twitter dimension which happens to be 3,000 by 1,000 pixels. So if you go up, up to your render settings here, and if I go to my width and my height, the width would be 3,000, right? And then your height right here would be 1,000, and those are the perfect dimensions for Twitter head dimension, right? So if you just a little quickly quick, just click that out, you have a lighter gray here, and then you have a little darker gray. So the lighter gray area is going to be what your render actually happens to be. So if you were to change whatever, and you kind of like render this out, if you just press no, whatever right this is the exact same size to actually render it out personally it's going to be inside of photoshop so if you guys want to see my example here if i just go to back to this render this is my actual render for my uh this version right here of course right so if i just click on my render Control t look at that right that's a perfect 3000 by 1000 that happens to be that i didn't, I didn't even move anything i just dragged it inside and it's perfectly like this that way you actually build your composition way easier way better and it just looks like just it makes your life 10 times easier honestly so now that that's out of the way two things are all two things out of the way Mo graph, mo text to get this thing going. So that's how you bring up your text, right? Click on this right here. I'm gonna go back to the object here. And we're gonna change this word to design. We're gonna change our alignment to the middle. That way it's in the middle, just like so. And we're gonna change our depth right now. It's about 130. So if you guys know what depth is, if I just change my camera angle for a second. If you guys don't know about depth, just change this to 130. Kind of like the thickness, your sort of like face to end, a little ratio between that. About 120 is pretty good for this. I'm gonna go ahead and go to our, let's bring that out of here our font choice and we're going to use the font choice of gotham narrow ultra and we're going to drag this right in the middle of our screen right in the middle of our preview by the way and we're going to take this i'm going to give ourselves a really cool rotation so for me i like to just say i kind of take the area over here and kind of move it like so wherever but if you guys don't know how to use that that's fine if you don't know how to use the rotation tools if it's hard for you basically i'm going to be taking my red moving this up right i'm gonna take my green moving this towards the left Right, and then giving my blue maybe a little bit of a, like a little, just a very, very small down, pulling it down. So hopefully that helps you a little bit. For me, I personally just take it and then kind of move it around until I find that angle that I kind of want. Uh, but if you're not like, you know, of course new, or if you're new to Photoshop, excuse me, Illustrator, mm, Cinema 4D, uh, it's probably not the easiest thing for you guys to understand. But for me, this angle is pretty okay. We're just gonna have the angle that way it can show off our depth. And in a second, we're gonna make a kind of like a back plate for our text in a second, right? So to do that, I'm gonna press Control C, Control V in our actual mode text that we just made to make a copy of it. So if you guys want to now, if I just zoom in for a second, also then I made it bigger, I changed my depth around, but that's okay, whatever. Just a nice thick depth that's going on here. Thick, mm, rip. Okay, so. I'm gonna go ahead and change my depth here. It's at one, basically it's like 165. I'm gonna change mine to about maybe like half of half. So right now half of this would be like, oh, nine, oh God, 13. Uh, okay, so it would be, <laughs> I didn't mean 13. You know what I You know what I was doing in my head, right? Just, just so we can get that clarified. Okay, anyway, 90, but it's gonna be 30. I meant to say 30, I swear. So I'm gonna say about 35, just to make it on the safer side. <laughs> that was so bad. <laughs> you do. We're so lucky I'm gonna keep this in. Uh, <laughs> I said 13. Okay, anyway, depth about 35. 
And basically, the reason why we did that is you can see the little orange line here kind of separates the two things right now because there's actually two different texts here. You can't just, you just can't see one, right? So the reason why we made one depth a little bit more thinner, which happens to be kind of like making ourselves that little cool little uh, little backplate here, right? That's what we're gonna be doing. So as you as you probably know, if you guys don't know already, Cinema 40 has fillet caps. So it happened to be, you see how like the front facing little text here is more of like a sharper like sharper edges and. Um, just more like just very just very sharp it's just very sharp everything right sharp corners all that stuff but if you use a fillet cap you can see in the background here is it's more rounded so that's the difference between one another is so if you want to you can fillet cap your first little uh you know front facing text here but i personally do not want to i'm gonna go ahead and go into here and just just i'm not gonna mess around with that i'm not gonna mess around with the fillet cap on the first one but for our copy though we're gonna go ahead into our copy on the one that has a smaller depth here go to our caps and go to our start and end cap and make them both fillet cap and then make your start radius and your, excuse me, your steps and your radius all about maybe like four. I'll say four or five or so. Just take four and just hold tab and just kind of click all the way down, right? Now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my movement arrow, take my blue arrow here, just move this backwards and then make sure that this is basically touching the back of this just about there. Okay, cool. Now I'm just gonna take this here, move that out of the way. And that's pretty dang good. If I just render it out really quickly, you'll see that there is now two different separate little texts here, right? But one has a fillet cap, looks like it's kind of holding the actual text itself, just for a very cool, simple little text effect. And like, just looks, you know, make sure render not looks so boring, right? So now I'm gonna have to create a very simple material. So new material, double click on this new material. And we're gonna right click on the actual preview and change this to object soft shadow. Now for the sake of just knowing this, if you just hold right click, and just move it just like so. You can actually move and rotate the actual material itself. If you guys want to make cool material packs, you don't have all the same exact ones in the whatever. You just just know that that's a thing. Okay. So now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my color, and we're gonna just make an orange, just a simply little orange. That's a pretty okay orange. And I'm just gonna take my orange, just drag it into that copy right here. And now if I just quickly render this out really quick, you'll see that there is that nice cool orange little back plate kind of holding the text itself. Now. This part is pretty much done. That's the text part. Very simple little text here. We're not doing anything crazy, anything like that. But for me, I kind of want to mess around with the depth a little bit more. I want to maybe do like 60 or so. I even wanted to do it for the actual preview, but I didn't really want to re-render anything out. Kind of like that. A little more. Might look a little bit cooler. Not too overkill, but something like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, once you have that pretty much all done, you're all good to go for the whole spline part now. It's more harder part, but also like, it's not so hard, I'm gonna give you guys some settings. I would personally advise you guys to not just use my settings alone, but kind of figure out what you kind of want to do yourself, but we're gonna still do that in, in a second as well. So I'm gonna say, this is pretty okay. We're gonna make sure, our, uh, this is the, of course, that Twitter header dimension that right here, right? So if you guys wanna say to yourselves, make sure everything is centered before you move on, that's perfectly fine. Also, um, you see me using cameras a lot as well, which you can see that this white camera that if I click on this box, it's bringing me to a different angle, but the white camera here is gonna be my actual camera that what happens when I click on the render, whatever camera I'm sitting on, it's gonna render that per, uh, that perspective only. So I'm not gonna move the camera at all in this perspective, but when I wanna do something and zoom in and zoom out and stuff like that, I'm gonna use this camera. That way I can also just zoom in and zoom out so I don't have to like, you know, mess around my perspective that I had that I might've really personally liked. So I would personally just make sure you guys understand the whole camera usage. Um, Okay, splines. Not that hard whatsoever, but it's kind of hard to kind of figure out your composition itself. So I'm gonna say, Helix, by the way, I'm gonna be using a helix. You can use a star. So what the, basically this is, is all your splines, all your paths, right? If I click on the helix, you can see this brings up a path for us inside of Sim 4D. You can even bring in your own paths that are just basically any AI file, really, honestly, any path or whatever you can do, whatever. But I'm using this uh, personally a helix because it has that cool little wraparound kind of feature, which makes it very, very easy when we change our settings as well. So anything that we kind of want it to have. So I have helix settings here, but for the sake of just like showing you guys what they would do, all you're basically be doing for me now if i really wanted to i'm gonna take my height like just make it a little more bigger right now immediately just by doing that you can see that you can have like a cool little thing like wrapping around once wrapping around twice you can have as much as you want you can make this even more longer messing around with your uh excuse me not that messing around with the start angle have it even longer where you can have it wrap around multiple, multiple, multiple times. But that's basically what that white line is. It's kind of a referencing that that is what your spline's gonna look like. It's kind of hard to think about, so I'm gonna show you guys now in a second how to actually make it into an actual circle spline where it actually has weight and depth and stuff like that, right? So if I just go into this same exact spline tab and go into our circle and then go to our NURBS tab, and we're gonna use the sweep, the sweep option right here. Click on that right there. And then what happens is in this exact order, maybe you use whatever spline you wanna have. So if you wanna use Helix person like me, or if you want to use star, if you want to use 
flour, whatever the heck you guys want to use, cogwheel, it doesn't really matter whatsoever. Whatever you want to have, have above that the circle, and then above that the actual sweetener. So, what's going to happen is you're going to take the helix, hold control, click on the circle, take both of these and just drag them inside sweep. You'll see the little arrow going down, let go, and now you have a little, little more depth, right? So, what's going to happen is to change your thickness, all you have to do is just go to your circle, go to your radius, put it to about maybe like 30, and then you have yourself some nice little thickness shrinkage just like that so now i want to show you guys exactly what i'm gonna be doing for the helix so my settings i have are 700 700 300 250 800 50 which is already pretty much default and then after 50 is 2300 <laughs> excuse me hiccups and then 100 so once that's all clear and good to go shrink this down so not shrink it rotate this Give me the rotation option. Oops, turn that off. Just like so. And we're gonna have this sort of like wrapping around. Let's wrap it around like, I'm trying to figure out, I wanna have this side in front of us. Right now it's behind us, I'm gonna take the red, have that in front of us, and then give ourselves that really cool little wrap just like so. Now, one thing I would pretty much advise you guys not to do is make sure you can actually still read the actual letters. So I'm going to take this and move this spline a little more further this way. What this is actually basically doing, let me kind of explain what I was doing for a second. This, if you click on this option right here, which is enable the access or axes, excuse me. If I just want to rotate this now, it's a little more easier for me. If it was like somewhere far, far to the left or far, far to the right, what I would do is just turn this on, take your movement tool, and then move it left and right wherever you need to kind of have it so it's a little more easier for you guys to move it. But make sure you pay attention to where it actually is because if you move it too far back, let's say if I just had this clicked, move it way too far back, right? And you're asking yourself, why is it super awkward to move or whatnot when you try to rotate it? It's just because you moved it way too far back. So please, just for the sake of you know knowing that, do not do that. Now I got to move this all the way up front again. But yeah. Oh, see? Now I lost it. I lost it. Where'd it go? Move that here. Take the blue. Move that. See how easily you can lose it? Jeez. Now I can't find it. Nope, that's pretty much... I think that's pretty much it. Oh my god. You are a jerk. There we go. I think I moved it in an okay place. Right? Oh, let me turn this off, right? There we go. It's a little, it's okay, but it was way better last time. But just so you guys know, that's how you kind of move that. And I'm going to kind of go about this and kind of make sure, kind of have it not in front of the text too much, but you can still read the G and the N, all that kind of stuff, right? So I'm going to kind of, got to flirt with a little bit more. I think right there is cool. It's a little bit different than my angle that I had previously that I liked a lot better before I messed around with it, but whatever, this is all right. I always want to be able to still read the text letters, right? So this is okay. So if I just render this out really quickly, you'll see that you can still see that it says the word design. Also, this is in the way now. This little soft box, I want to move that out of the way. Okay, I'm messing around with that. Kind of messed with my entire composition, but not too hard to fix, but there we go. Right, so now you can see this. It's kind of like wrapping around. It's in front of it. It's pretty cool. I have a different angle here for mine personally and my actual other render. It's in the opposite direction, basically. And it's still like okay, but I don't like the fact that it's coming out right over here, or essentially it's coming out really, really far down. So I want to make sure I kind of move that around. But I'm gonna play with that for a quick little second. And I'll just bring you guys back to where you know you know we'll continue in a second, right? Okay, so I basically, I kind of gave into this kind of angle here. It's pretty pretty close still, but I kind of have a different angle. Regardless, I'm not going to find the same exact angle as I check and look at it, but this is perfectly fine. Okay, so make sure you find yourself. I kind of still left that little loop in here inside the frame, but I kind of took this end point out of the frame, right, which is in the gray, darker gray area, and this is also in the darker gray area just on the left and right side. So I want to make sure I still have that loop in the actual uh, area. So make sure you just kind of figure out, this is what I mean by composition, right? You won't, you won't be able to personally figure this out you know exactly unless you have the actual dimensions in front of your face so having it like this is way better but anyway that's kind of like the whole portion of this so i kind of I, I did change my settings around a little bit but in a sense this is kind of what i have i want to have this this looks pretty good and the way i'm going to do this i'm going to do this one more time but for this little copy here all i'm going to do is make a copy by either pressing Control c Control v to make a copy and then moving it just like so 
or if you want to, you can hold control and then move it around just like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go ahead and I'm gonna find my little copy here and I'm gonna give myself a different little, uh, just a very, very small adjustment. So what I would do personally, just right away off the bat is move your height and just move this way, way like thin, uh, excuse me, either farther down or further up. I'm gonna say like further up. Take this now, because all I want this to have is like a very, very smooth sort of just like a, it's a different little thing. Also, you can see what happened, like, like I said last time. Remember I was like, this thing is totally way, way farther away. Take this, make sure I like know where I'm pushing it. Oh, of course it's not gonna work this time, but that's what I mean by when it was too far away. Let's go ahead and kind of just say like, that is pretty much okay though. That's kind of how I want to have it. It's a very, very simple little squirrel that you can't really tell it's like too much of this equivalent squirrel. I'm going to take the, the circle of this one, right? The circle of this one's radius happens to be uh, 26. I'm just going to make it 25 for the sake of the video. Settings wise, I'm going to make my other circle about 15. So basically 10 minus 10 of that. So now I have two different little circle spines that are kind of rotating. One's rotating around it. And I kind of want to have this circle here be even a little bit more bigger. Honestly, like 35 almost. Mm, like 30. Right, so then we have that little, that closer one, that closer spline that's wrapping around the text. It's a little more thicker, a little more bigger, and it just kind of like gives you that feel that's kind of like in your face, and it's just way cooler, right? It kind of gives you a better composition. So what I'm gonna do now is once I have these two things here, I'm gonna do my little orange accents, which happens to be just orange little splines themselves, just to have like a really cool, complete composition when it comes to color and kind of having it look pretty cool. So right now, all I have is this first one that's coming around the actual text, and the other one's kind of like just there to kind of like look cool and pretty and whatnot, right? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make that little orange one. You can see the orange one is not really a spline, but it's more or less sort of a, uh, it's more or less like a like a skinny little kind of like disc like like you know thickness, right? So I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna do that, and it's very very easy. You can just use the same exact thing as before. I'm gonna use this duplicate right here, and make a duplicate of this one. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rotate this for a second, kind of get a cool little thing here, right? And all I did was is you take the circle and you just turn on the ellipse. Take the y axis, have it be the thickness of that, kind of like shrink that down. But you want to still be able to see that cool disc like look like that's pretty cool honestly stop moving that i want to move the actual sweep there we go and that looks pretty cool honestly i'm gonna rotate this a little bit okay i gotta get out of that excuse me and if this is too much of a hassle you can make multiple cameras by the way i'm just not personally making multiple cameras i don't really care that much something like that maybe and I would say that's pretty okay. I just want to have it kind of like just a little bit different, honestly. I'm gonna make a multiple camera really quick. I said I didn't care, but now I care because it's getting on my nerves. There we go. <laughs> okay. Move camera. Okay, so that one's that one. All right, I'm gonna mix up with my cameras. All right, anyway, I just want to kind of just take this spline here and sweep this and move this a little bit more over but it's just not allowing me to now i'm gonna move this actual thing like i did before that i kind of got messed up at and now i can move this a little more freely inside the actual point of view there we go so something like that would actually look pretty badass too jeez I'm trying to get a really cool like angle because of course i have different angles from last time but I'll, i want to do this inside the video itself because i still feel like having that little freedom when it comes to like, or not freedom, but like creative thought when I'm talking about it and doing it itself may help you out as well. I don't want to in front of the camera or excuse me, behind the text. I don't want to have it just like there. I think that's pretty okay. I'm going to take an orange, drag that onto there. I'm going to do one more, drag this over here. I'm just going to have this one be a little more skinnier. Very, very skinny. Like not too skinnier. Very, very little more skinnier, like seven or so. Excuse me. I'm going to have to change this to like, maybe like mm, 45. There we go. I'm going to take the helix. Just make the height just a little bit more. Take this. Rotate it now. To about there. Take it behind the text. 
just enough so you have that little bit of hinted orange and i think that's pretty close to like how i'm gonna have this little final version here i know there's a lot of talking but the reason why i talked a lot was just because honestly i wanted to make sure you guys understood the composition the whole point of this is to kind of have fun with splines themselves but making sure you have that really really nice balance so if i render this out really quickly of course it's going to render out the entire thing but as you see that gray area the dark gray area those are my preview settings so make sure you guys know that i'm looking at it more or less like cut off like right here when you actually render it out but this is a pretty cool balance where you have basically you know orange and like excuse me orange period on the left and right hand side of the actual dimension itself and then you have orange in the text itself as well now it might be covering the text too much it's not doing that much at all honestly either but you see that really nice lighting on this orange looks super freaking pretty now if you want to do more little orange accents or whatever you definitely can personally but i think this is a it's not too cluttered and whatnot this right here might can just like, let me go through this one right here you can have a lot of fun with this basically what i'm trying to say and then just also kind of like figuring out just different things you can do like i said you can use besides using circles just for the sake of like showing you guys which happens to be which one is this one that's that i want to use like whatever this one is so besides using circles i can delete this i can take this and use Let's just show you guys, not that. Show you guys and use stars, just like so. And you can have a star in there and not actually like a uh, whatever else, right? You can have different things. How am I gonna do this? Oh, okay, so that's points. All right, I didn't really know how to do this until now, but you know, kind of messing around my points. Maybe my inner radius in this will help me shrink it down. Or how can I shrink it down personally? Maybe by using this itself. Yeah, so you can use you can do a whole bunch of different. That looks pretty freaking dope. I ain't lie to you. Anyway, we're gonna go back to our circles though. Because I like circles, but just know that there's a lot of freedom when it comes to this. So there's a lot of different stylistic choices when it comes to your splines. But for me, I'm gonna have it like this. I'm gonna move on into Photoshop to just make it look that much better, just a little more pretty, right? And then we're gonna take it and then finish it off there. So I'm gonna see you guys over there. So to switch you, he's gonna, you know, go bye bye for a second. <laughs> All right, guys, so basically the render just finished just like so. And now it took me one minute to kind of render this out. And I did change a few things because I did render out before. And I found out that this is in centered, right? And I also changed the angle right here, as you can see as well. So I just said, okay, I'm going to change the angle. So I changed the angle. And I was like, now it's not centered. And now I got to fix the center. That's all I really changed. So just very, very quick little stylistic choices. I wanted to, it doesn't have to be exactly in the center, but I wanted to have it so that it was just at least somewhat in the center, right? Because uh, there's no real, like, really way to, like, kind of figure it out immediately in a way, in the sense of, like, before kind of setting it up the text-wise, but this is perfectly fine. Anyway, also make sure that you have, when you do render this out, right, this is the render button right here, but when you do render this out, under your save settings, make sure you have alpha channel selected, that way you have no background actually there, just for people who don't really know what that is, so if you guys want to have a transparent background, what you want to have is want to make sure you have that checked, right? So, once I just cut out of there, and we're going to go into Photoshop here, and of course, this is our this is our little kind of like thing we're gonna kind of like replicate itself. But of course, we're not gonna have the same exact sort of approach just because singly uh, we don't have the same exact splines. Basically, that's all. Um, so now I'm gonna just show you guys this orange that I'm using is it's basically like a nice complementary orange that I'm using from my actual materials themselves. It happens to be the hex code E9B244. Very very nice little orange here for our kind of like starting position here. So I'm also gonna take our spline that I have here and drag this in immediately. And as you can see, I'm pushing my chair a little bit, is that it's exactly the same as the dimensions and exactly the way that we kind of foretold it when it's inside some 40. So if I press enter, we're already good to go. Now, one thing immediately is you're gonna see is that when you have Photoshop and you have, excuse me, when you have Cinema 4D and you run things out and you have things like these right here, you see this little black outline? That's basically happening because you have a sharpen. Now I have a sharpen on my Lightroom right here, just like, oops, that's not what I meant to do. In my Lightroom right here, I have a sharpen filter, which happens to do this to your render, have that really awkward, like odd little black line around it. So we're gonna get rid of that. The way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna make a duplicate of our spline. Since I already know we're gonna have to move that ever, we're just, I can just rasherize this image really quickly, just like so. And now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press W on my keyboard, right? Just with this W tool here, I'm gonna use a, nope. I wanna use the magic wand tool. I wanna select every single little point right here. So I'm just selecting every single point. And I believe you can just hold control and click on this right here, but I wanna have it select the inverse then. If you wanna hold control and select the actual inverse, which is perfectly fine. If you wanna hold control on the thumbnail, it'll select everything inside there, but I want everything outside of it, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold control and I said that like five fucking times. I get it, you hold control, okay? What you're gonna do now is you wanna right click and uh, select the inverse once you've held control. Okay, it's like the inverse, just like so that way it's kind of like exactly what I did before, right? Selecting every single part very simply, very quickly. Um, so now what you're gonna do, you're gonna go to uh, select, modify, expand by one pixel and press okay. What happens now is everything you selected, it's gonna now expand by one pixel, it's gonna do this. So now what you can do is you can just simply just press M on your keyboard. It'll give you the option when you right click, 
on this um, rectangle marquee tool. Right click and layer via copy or cut. You can just do cut. I would personally do cut. Right. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get rid of this. You can see that it gets rid of that black line because it's basically one pixel thick. So once I've done that, you have a nice cleaner render that doesn't have that weird black line. So now it just looks 10 times better, 10 times easier to work with, and it won't bug you too much anymore. So now that is pretty much done. Now, the other part that comes to this is basically using sort of like a nice sort of orange, like I said before, but kind of having it a little bit more on the side of just sort of having it just kind of like not the same as I told them all the way around. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just click on this. And I know I have a white background by the way, but I wanted to make it look white because it looks way better than uh, any other color that I use personally. When you actually view the actual thing I'm doing here, I'm just gonna put myself with a nice, very simple kind of soft brush right here. Uh, zero hardness, very big size, didn't really matter whatsoever. But then lower it down quite significantly, maybe even towards the like two ratio or not. But it's still a difference. You can see the difference because with white and orange stuff like this, you'll be able to see things very, very clearly. So that about maybe like four opacity or so, just so we have like a different tone of color a little bit of a different tone of color when it comes to like the actual overall background color, right? So now I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply just make a new layer above this, click P on my keyboard, P on my keyboard, please, P on the keyboard, please, there, hello, P, P on the keyboard, just like so, okay? So once you do that, you wanna just basically make yourself like a really cool little simple little, uh, I would call it, I don't know, like a cool just kind of shape going on here. So for me, I'm gonna do something like this. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of like have it like this or so, kind of have it on the left hand side. Looks pretty cool, right? Just a very weird, odd shape and whatnot. So, but just like that. If you guys know how to do that, all I really did to reduplicate it is click, click and drag to make that first initial kind of like curve. I'm gonna hold Alt just so I can get rid of this. I kind of made it sort of a straight line. Click over here, and then once you click over here once again, you just click and drag until you get that really cool shape. Now to have it look like it's a little more wider on this side and skinnier towards here, just make sure that this is more wider than this right here. And once you've done that, you connect it. And what you're gonna do is on that new layer, right? I'm gonna do it for this one, of course, though. On that new layer, right, that I have right here, right click, fill path, and we're gonna use just simple old white, just like so. Now this is pretty okay, but the, the, the dang D is way too like, all right. Uh, all right, but whatever, I, I'm gonna keep it there because that's where I had it personally. But I just know that the D is gonna be a little bit too faded. That's okay though, it might look cool to you and whatnot. But that's basically what I did, right? Just like so. I'm gonna do this one more time. On this side here, we give myself a cooler kind of like, very weird, like almost a lips kind of look to this. So the way I did that is, click right around like, this is the middle. I'll show you where the middle is really quickly. So this is the middle. I'm gonna click further towards the left in the middle and then click around maybe like, sort of the middle of uh, this right hand side, just like so, click and drag, hold control, click on this extended point here, and just drag this up towards here to get something like that, right? And then you just wanna go all the way around, just like so, right? And then you wanna, on that new layer that I already have already open, fill the path in with white, and then delete that. So now we have something like that now. So now it's just kinda like giving yourselves like a really cool, just fun little look to it, it was really, really dope, to be honest with you. I'm gonna group together these two white shapes that we just made, and we're gonna make another new layer, and we're gonna clip mask another new layer to that layer right here, just not clip mask another new layer, clip mask that layer, that new layer that you just made onto this group, which happens to be that white shape, so you know what this is, whatever, white with a U, no, we're gonna change that. <laughs> uh, and then clip mask that new layer onto that white shapes group, just like so. So what you're gonna do now is gonna take that simple little black here with a nice little soft brush, zero hardness, stuff like that, and then just click and drag just a little bit right there. This might be too harsh, so I'm gonna do this over again. Use my eraser, excuse me, my brush, and just click one simple time, very faded sort of like black right there is okay. Now the reason why I did that is, is I don't wanna have a simple just white only when it comes to the tone of just having a white background kind of thing, right? I wanna have it to be a little more kind of like, not dirty in a sense, but just a little bit of that little gradient That'll just give you that just better just choice of look, right? So you can see that it's like a little bit of a gradient, but it's a very, very slim thing. But personally, as you know, you can see that it's gonna be a difference and you can see that orange difference up here in the top left and bottom right. It just looks overall pretty much better, right? So I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make another new layer and this is basically like the kind of final thing about it is you wanna just take the orange that you have in your background, the more darker side, just click on that. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna simply just click once over in the middle, maybe over here and then maybe up here or down here, I would say. Right, and once you do that, you just wanna simply just change your blend mode from normal to linear dodge. Add, lower your opacity down just like so, 
And that looks pretty much way better now, of course. Now, this is just very, very simple lighting and stuff like that. But there's one more thing I also want to do as well, which is add a vibrance in here. So I'm going to add a vibrance. Just very, very just like dramatic with it because it's a very, very nice color. And with the whole vibrance coming in now, you can see more of the kind of color changes or color shifts when it comes to the oranges and the whites now. If you want to put your saturation up, you can as well. Just a little bit, not too much. Maybe about two or so. And I'll put my vibrance to about 60 or so. That's 30, 60. Just like that. And there we go, we have that little bit of there. Like, not too bad whatsoever. Now, I did one cool thing about this as well when it comes to like the whole final render version right here. Not that, this, right here, right? So the little difference right now is, of course I have a way smaller text actually, but whatever. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of figure out that little color balance that I had before. So, color balance, drag this more towards there, drag this more towards here. So my sign to right, I'm gonna drag it more towards the right, which would be about 25. My uh, magenta to green, I'm gonna bring it to about negative 20 or so. This is, of course, if you're using the same exact colors as me. I don't know why I just had a bleh, like weird little, uh, what the hell was that? But you know what I mean. So negative 20 for the magenta to green, and yellow to blue, let's just say about mm, positive 10. Okay, there we go. So that's a little color balance there. If you guys wanna see what that does, if I just uncheck and check, it gives it nice and nice, and like a nice, like a like a like a like a like a like a nice. <laughs> like it gives us a very cool, very nice sort of blue filter over everything. So now, once you have that all set and done, there's one thing I said like, like I did right here, right? So if you wanna, I keep saying like a like a like a. Uh, <laughs> I did this thing right here. So this right here kind of gave us like a really cool, just sort of, it was just cool. I, so I'm gonna show you guys how I did it, very simply, right? And you also see little things I did right here as well. If you want to do that as well, you definitely can. If you want to fill some areas and just like with white, um, that's something you definitely can. But not so much if you have like this coming over here. If this was, if this wasn't white, it was just only white like right here and didn't get really white over here. You can make this full circle white. Um, if you just had to think about that previously, but I already thought about that previously. But I want to make this a little more different so you can see it's like it's still versatile. But anyway, regardless, let's just go back to that little part I was gonna say in a second. So this right here is our little spline copy. This is our render. Right, so our render, we're gonna take a duplicate of this render just like so. So the render copy, you wanna drag this below, of course, this uh, original render, and you wanna take your fill, and you wanna drag this all the way down to zero. Once you do that, basically you know that this right here, you, it's still there, you just can't personally see it. But the fact that we lowered our fill down to zero, now our opacity is a, a bit of difference, right? Because what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take our uh, little render copy here, and we're gonna go to drop shadow, and we're just gonna simply give ourselves a negative, or excuse me, positive, maybe 130-ish angle, 135 is okay up our distance up just a bit and we're gonna take our color here it's on normal by the way and we're just gonna give ourselves like a nice like orange something like that pretty perfect press ok press ok again and now you have these little cool little orange copies of like basically the exact same spline excuse me in a little drop shadow and it looks pretty cool so what I'm gonna do now is once you have this and so the fills on zero all that cool stuff all you're gonna have is little splines running around what you want to do is you want to rasterize the layer type just like so because what's gonna happen now is you can now erase it so the reason why I said uh, you know rasterize the layer type if you try to erase right now it'll kind of it'll kind of like copy exactly what you had before uh, not in the sense and actually now only because these are very small splines something like this might look weird, you can't see because it it's an orange background, but regardless, I would definitely advise you guys to, of course, rash out your layer type. That way, it's just no problems at all. And you want to take your eraser and just give yourself that cool look to it. So I'll give myself like a cool look right here. I kind of want to keep that other area, so I want to just erase that only. And maybe just like have that over there. Get a little skinny over here. Shrink that that way. Shrink that this way. Shrink this down here and very, very simply races. It'll look so much better if you just be careful about it. I can keep that over here. I don't want to get rid of this though, for sure. If you want to keep it there to kind of like get the D, make sure it's like, if you want to like make sure you put it there, just so you can like separate the white of the D and the actual uh, little shape there. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and say, that's pretty good. My eyes are watering from looking at this color the entire day. Um. I'll say right about there. I'll get rid of this right here as well. I like this is very pretty looking right there. We'll keep that right there as well. And then something around there is okay as well. So now that you have that, you kind of have that really cool little misty kind of thing going around here. I would just call it like a drop shadow copy and whatnot or drop shadow. What name would I give it? Drop shadow doesn't matter at all because it looks cool, period. So once you have that done, what you can do is you can make a new layer above that copy layer and you can just take your pen tool and you can just go around just like so, kind of pencil this out again. If you're trying to get as 
good as you can do it right about there right and just go around it just like so if you want to right click make a selection on that new layer you made over that copy if you just want to take like a very simple maybe a white and then shrink your brush down a nice soft brush and then kind of give yourself it's kind of like doing the aurora effect if you guys remember that on my channel just like so and you just put this on overlay you'll get that really cool look to it, it looks pretty like badass once you kind of go all the way through it i'm not gonna go all the way through it but as you can see it does add a lot to it and pretty much that would be the entire like direction the entire thing i'm not gonna like i said i'm not gonna do the entire thing when it comes to this little effect here but if you want to do a lot more you definitely can now what i also would do is when you kind of like say to yourself you're completed with it i would definitely hold shift click on the first first layer or should be the top layer the top layer above everything hold shift click on the actual bottom layer including the background itself Control j which will make a duplicate of the entire thing that you just selected Control e then merge everything together that you had selected and then you want to go to filter filter gallery and put on paint dubis whatever it's called and if you press ok if you zoom in let's just say like let's go somewhere where it's very very sharp like this right here if i just show you guys it makes it way way more sharper as you can see right there it makes it super super sharp so i would tell you guys for the final little little like little i guess little what is it icing on the top of the whatever um <laughs> that's what i would definitely do so that's basically it for today's tutorial here today. If you guys want to just like let me know, we can call this. I'm just going to call whatever the hell the title is right now. Um, But yeah, hopefully you guys do enjoy it. I know I said before I was going to do a 3D tutorial. I delivered. I think it's pretty badass, honestly. And I, of course, I know it's been like a, a month or what, whatnot since we had a banner tutorial period. But I just want to say thank you guys very, very much. We we had we introduced a very, really cool different audience this entire month, which happened to be one of my favorite months or most, I guess, growth months when it comes to subscribers. Just get some new people in here. But uh, yeah, we're going to go back to the more original Original sort of flowy kind of stuff but i also do want to do some of those videos as well throughout the week and whatnot you might see me drop one or two or whatnot i don't know i don't know i don't know yet but i just appreciate all the support regardless i've been having a very very good just first 2018 i don't know how many uh there's so many things that are going through my head that i can i want to tell you but i just can't personally but there's just so many things that are just going to be happening soon for me hopefully i'm not going to like make any jinxes or anything like that but i've been having a very very good year um, so just thank you guys so very much. Honestly, the appreciations, the likes, the everything, the subscriptions, the Twitter followers, all of that stuff is making it very, very just great for me personally. And I don't want to start crying or nothing like that, but I'm going to go ahead and go because I really do appreciate you guys and I want you guys to know that. And I'll uh, talk to you guys later. System HQ out. Don't forget to keep smiling. Stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys. Stay freaking productive, guys. Later.